So I want to call BS on yeah, both of you. Oh, I want to call BS on both of you because what you're both suggesting, and it's bullshit. If he's there at the end of the year, I'll take you both to Mr. Wong's. No, but you lie because last time no, you had a bet. I don't lie. Last time you had a bet about Gold Coast Titans, what happened? You're still a because, man. Mate, that was completely not what I said. <laughs> What's this joint called? Costello's. Okay, just tell him I'm coming. I don't yeah. need to go with no, you. No, you're coming with me. <laughs> All right? Just tell him you're I'm coming. You're Portugal. Coming. I'll get a table of two for you. Okay, beautiful. G'day, everybody. Welcome to Footy Talk with Wado, Woodsy, and Maroon. Uh, Wado, g'day, mate. G'day, Maroon. How are you? Been with you every day this week. I it's feel a, like it has yeah. been. And it's been, there's a good feeling in the studio today, all right? Yeah. There's a good feeling. I got to play footy for the first time since round one. Woodsy made his debut and a couple of wins. So let's keep this feeling yeah. rolling, boys. Woodsy, welcome to you as well. Now, thank you, Maroon. I was actually really nervous for the game because my mocking skills have been Awful lately, so I was a bit worried for the mm. Manly Seagulls. But, mate, we got the win. A couple of points. Firstly, with you two guys, I have been in the wonderful position to witness you both uh, celebrate the wins with your boys, with your sons. Yep. Often in radio, we talk about the money can't buy moments. And I'd imagine not only for you, but for your kids, they are money can't buy moments. Oh, yeah. It's the best part of the um – like one of the best parts of the whole footy now for me is having my boys come down and run on the field after the, the game. Um, it was hard being suspended because they don't they're too young yeah. enough to quite understand what a suspension is. So, you know, I know I've, I've referred to it as a naughty corner. Yeah. That's how I um, explained it to the boys. But you know what's all, really awesome for me is like after the game, the boys come on the field and I'll get text messages or photos from my mum and dad. They're watching the TV. They're watching their son with – my, yeah. like their grandchildren on the, on the field having fun. And you know, that's like the special things for me that I'll always have mm. in my memory. Like it's just something that we're lucky and we're fortunate uh, to be able to do, to have our, you know, children experience that. I, I remember that's something I've always, you know, I've always been jealous of other, I look at Andrew Fafita. He's got the whole tribe there on, you know, at the end of games. And I know when I first got to that, when, when Buster was a, a brand new boy is it, uh, it was against the Cowboys at Shark Park. And, um, you know, you say, You've been suspended, Wado. Mate, I've had three clubs in four yeah. years, so he doesn't know which team to go for at the moment. He well, just no, gets... we do know. He's, he's, <laughs> he's got loyalty to the Sharks. He's got a Shark and a Sharper on. That. So he got a little bit disappointed on the weekend because he had to put the Manly jersey on. Right. But he slowly, because he likes the Eagle Rock, and he heard that a fair bit there. But like after the game in the sheds, Tommy Turbo's got the bottle, and just, he's shaking it with Tommy Turbo. And I was like, this kid doesn't understand like how lucky he is to be doing it with a player of that stature mm. in the game. you know. And I don't think he'll realise that until maybe – you know, when he's in his 13 or 14. So, mate, it's it's, it's an absolute honour to take them in there, isn't it? Well, we actually had Buster in after our game too. Yeah. He came in with Ronnie. He was sitting on our seats and listening to Fitz, um, yeah. the post-game speech, sung the song of us. Yeah, so. And then you know what he said to me when he came out of the sheds? He goes, Daddy, did you sing your song as well? <laughs> <laughs> I said, not tonight, brother. <laughs> and uh, what is funny though, Woodsy, and congratulations on getting a win. You're undefeated. But what about when you thought you scored that try? Oh, Fair dinkum. I thought they were going to have to bring out a change of undies for look, you. Honestly, you got to play the ref a bit. And look, I, I seen you have a little bit of a fumble, Jerome Hughes, and I thought, I'll just jump on this and carry on, you know. Did you get the pistols going? I yeah, know, no, I, know. I, I honestly was that. I couldn't believe what happened, Wade. I was just up and I was like, and the boys have been giving it to me at training. And um, look, the ref gave it a try, um, Adam G, one of our, you know, South Carolina. Uh, a good Granola, story, yeah, a good, good story, fella, actually, Loves man. his budgie smugglers down there. Um, but, yeah, when they went back to the, uh, it wasn't confirmed and, yeah, the video ref let me down. All right. Now, just before we get, I don't want to, sorry, sorry. I don't want to leave you, I don't want to be, make this whole thing about giving you a bake, Woodsy, but I just want to tell, tell you, Wado, I've worked out what he does, this bloke, right? Our producer, Charlie White, he tells us to get here at four to do the podcast, and he gets here at three and uh, and sends out a, a group all message, does anyone want a coffee? Because he knows no one's here <laughs> yet, and he'll only have, that, yeah, that's what you do to save money on three coffees. You're kidding, mate. I that's to, what I, you do. I, I, I had to get Wendell from the rush hour, four shots and two sugars. Uh, it's cost me 20 bucks for one coffee. Yeah, right. Oh, look, I'll tell you what, I've been to a shop with Wendell in Trangy and said, do you want a coffee? He grabbed two sandwich, two sandwiches, <laughs> a drink, a chocolate, and a coffee. Mate, you got to play your card smart because he doesn't. He loves a freebie, the big deal. All right, boys, let's talk about a bit of footy. Uh, Wado Woodsy and Maroon. Jack White, and a lot of the talk has been around him uh, and the possibility of changing clubs. But now the talk about him, well, he, it's not talk. He's he's standing down from origin duty. You, both, you blokes have both played origin. It's... And you've both pointed out at one time or another watching Origin as kids and saying how much you want to do it. And here's a guy who's done it, but now he's saying 
I don't want to do it anymore. Or I don't want to do it for a while. Yeah, oh, well, I see just with Jack, you know, and obviously um, he's been in the, the meet, like in the news cycle a bit lately because of the contract situation where he wanted to test the market. Um, and now he, you know, stood down from representative, um, you know, selection. I just honestly see it being like, this is a guy who's done everything in the game so far. He's ticked every box. He's played and won origin. He's played for Australia and won, won for Australia, just won in the, the previous world cup. The only thing he hasn't done is won a premiership. And I just see this as, you know, Jack testing the market, you know, looking around at other clubs, other opportunities, possibly like the possibility of other clubs. Um, and just now, you know, not that it's a distraction origin because it's a, it is a privilege and it is an honor, but I, I just feel like he is just getting everything out of the way and he just has tunnel vision. He wants to win a premiership. And I, this is what I see. Um, this is a step in that um, mm. decision-making in him. Are you suggesting, Wade, that you think that he thinks that the Raiders could win the premiership? Well, I, I I just think he, you know, in his own mind, he's making himself um, you know, completely focused on his club because you know a health, like a healthy and and focused Jack Whiten playing his best football ultimately, you know, brings his club into contention with um, with competing for that premiership because he's such a quality player and that's the just the last couple of months with all the noise around Jack and what he's thinking and you know certainly this decision just feels like. Jack's one priority is his club and he wants to help drive his club towards premiership success. And it's, it's probably the last thing that's left on the big fellas um, resume to tick off. And, you know, he's, how old is he now? He's 30, 30. 29, so 30. He's 30 this year. Yeah. So, you know, the, the end's uh, nearer than the beginning. So, it, you know, I, I think it's a really selfless decision from Jack as in, He's going, because it is such an honor to play for Origin, mm. to play Origin, to represent New South Wales and represent Australia. So he's actually went, well, I'm going to put my individual aspirations at the rep level to the side because I want to give myself completely to the club and try and drive my club ultimately to premiership success. Yeah, I sort of agree, Wade. And, and you know, something that Freddie spoke about over time is he hates that outside noise. Um so there'll be a lot of scrutiny under Jack, what he's doing with his contract, whether he's staying rugby league, going to another club, going to rugby union, because there's a bit of chat with that as well. And um, like you said, Wade, he's at that, you know, 30 years old. And if he does go to union, it can prolong his career because, you know, how tough rugby league is on your body. But yeah, I think it's a really good thing for Canberra because he's putting all his eggs in the one basket and he's got full commitment and focus to them, you know, and um, they probably could be disappointed that saying, yeah, he is testing the market, but man, he's given up an origin jersey. To, mm. to to give a hundred percent crack at winning the comp this year for Canberra. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He's played the last ten or nearly ten straight games. Mm. He missed one through the I think he missed COVID. through COVID yeah. and then because he missed that game, he became eighteenth man. The last Someone one, else came yeah. in for the and he was eighteenth man for the last one. So it's a and let let's not forget, he was the starting centre in that World That's Cup Australia. final. Mm. Exactly so right. he was the incumbent international for Australia. So perfect fourteen for us, I reckon. He's, he's a quality Perfect. player. He's a player that gives confidence to other players because you know 100% what you're going to get. He's going to go 100 miles an hour and compete, be aggressive, um, be physical, and he's always going to go after the contest. So he's a player, you look around the dressing shed, yep. you see Jackie's putting the boots on, you go, oh, well, he gives me a bit of confidence because I know he's going to be having a crack. Hey, but I wonder, with, with a lot of talk this week being around finding a, a spot for Nico Hines, yep. do, is there some way we can now shuffle the deck chairs... You know, we are always doing that with Origin. Are we finding spots for players that aren't necessarily their spots? Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you think that somehow they'll work? They can work that out. For as in saying, get Nico Hines in oh, there. I think you sort of have to make a, a role for Nico. The the form he's in, you can't say no. Um, and he's done it for a, not just the season. He's gone to this like he's got a lot of pressure on the back of him after getting Dalian Player of the Year. You know, he missed the first couple of weeks of the season through injury, and the form he's been in, like. Since he's come back, I got a first hand look at it when he played against the Dragons that night. It was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and then seeing the highlights package of pretty much Nico the other night against the Roosters, he single handedly nearly won that game. So, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a funny one too because I know the incumbents are Luai and, and Cleary, uh -huh. but, you know, you had Chorus out there last year. So the combinations they picked on a lot of that. And there's a bit of talk that Cook might be in there this year. So um, it's going to be a pretty open side. But, Mate, if, if Nico keeps playing the way he is, he's pretty much just demanding a jersey. It's not, you know, what jersey he's going to get. He's just going to get that six because he's playing so well. Mm. 
Okay. Uh, for me, I would actually go, you know, I think if you're going to pick Nico, you, you wasted picking him on the bench. Mm. Like you, you're playing for the 80 minutes. He's your six or your seven. The, clear, the more he's on, on Waiter. He, I, I think you're wasting him putting, putting him on the bench. I would, you know, as that 14 role, I'd not necessarily use a utility. I'd probably go two hookers. I'd probably have room in my team for Cook and Appy. Yep. Like, mm. But like, he's not going to be seven. He's not going to be seven. Clear he's going to be seven. So yeah. the decision is for Nico would be six. I think it's Lua, 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 Lua or Nico. Hines. Yeah. So, or Nico. It's one of those things. It's, it's one of those things like you either, you start them or you don't play them. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah you, you can't really put them on the bench because they're both type of players. You need them out there from the get go. And then, like you said, you're going to have those two hookers. I think Appy's a perfect forward off the bench. Just his deception and just bringing the forwards, in, you know, at that 20, 25 minute mark. And especially in origin waiter, like it, he's so hard to stop. So. Yeah, and you look at, so. You know, Harry Grant's probably the the best hooker in the competition yep. at the moment. They do that with Ben Hunt. And Ben Hunt starts at nine because that first 20 minutes of origin it's is tough. chaos. It's, yep. it's absolutely chaos. Well, look it's at Cameron hundred... Murray. I think it was two or three HIAs yeah. in the game three mm. last year. Remember that? So yeah. you, to have that injection off the bench of a hooker, a specialist hooker, who, yep. ident who, who identifies the ruck and can manipulate the ruck with those tired bodies, I think, you know, it's been a strength of Queensland side and I wouldn't be surprised you know, if we carry two hookers and don't have, because then if you if you have someone like Nico Hines on the bench, and he doesn't get an opportunity in the first half, right? Because the game just doesn't work where work do out. Him? Where where do you put him on? You know, do you pull a half off to put him on, or do you you know put him at the back? Like you really get forced to make a change because you have that because you have him on the bench. And that's the other thing without having Jack White now, because he was like that Luke Lewis type. Luke yeah. could play center wing. Back row, middle lock, so they could play so many different positions. But now that we don't have Whiten, I'm with you, Wade. You either you either start Nico, or, or you just can't pick him at all. All right, boys. <laughs> the poor old Dragons <laughs> are sitting luncheon. in 13th position. <laughs> their 13th position on the ladder. Uh, they've lost their last two, and we all said, well, after the Titans beat them on the bell, they're going to have to play the Raiders, and they're going to have to play the Roosters on the Anzac Day game. They're in trouble. The Dragons. Nothing good in the way of rugby league is spoken about coming out of Wollongong. Our very own Gordon Tallis had this to say. So let's just get rid of him then, right? If that's what they want to do. If it's pressure on him, it's pressure on him. I thought the players were up for it. I thought they had a real crack in the first half. They had all the momentum and they just couldn't get the ball over the line. So that doesn't come down to the coach. That comes down to the players putting on a play where that doesn't work. There's plan B, there's plan C, using your vision. It's probably a little bit too much Ben Hunt ball. They just need to get on with it. And Anthony Griffin, I said I don't feel sorry for anybody. I do feel sorry for the noise around him. To go out there and do your job and know that you're not wanted. I don't know how he turns up every day at that organisation, to be quite honest. I wouldn't be coaching there mm. if I didn't have the support of my bosses. I'd tell them to shove it. Would you it right fit. now so say, say see you later? Would you? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Well, there's Gordy Tallis. I mean, Gordy does say what he thinks. And look, I guess between the three of us, none of us think that it'll be long for yeah. Hook. Uh, I've never asked you face to face, flat out, man to man, what was your relationship like with uh, Anthony Griffin? Yeah, I got along with him well. Uh, he's a bit of a man's man. Like he's an old school bloke. Um, but you look, like what he said, like the, the effort's there. You know, we just spoke about the Bulldogs. Oh, we're happy with their effort. But it's just because Dragons are such a huge club and in demand and they've been in the media for this whole preseason, he, he was on a hiding to nothing. He, was, he had to win pretty much every game from the first six rounds just to keep the noise away. Um, and you look, like most of the games they've been, they've been in, in every single game except for the, the Sharks game. And, and they were into that right at half time until I think Sharks, you scored right on the bell at half time, didn't you, Wado? Which yeah, got used yeah, into yeah. a lead. Yeah, well, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was twelve eight at close half time. Yeah, yeah, it was two tries all, but it's just a you know a, a lack of probably like you said, you know, they, you see Ben Hunt at the end of the game. I was watching it on TV again on Fox Maroon, and he had an interview at the end of the game, and you could just tell the the frustration. It's, it looks like it's just wearing him down. Um, and you know he was disappointed himself. He said he he hit Josh Kerr short. And he should have went out the back because there was numbers, um, but. Whatever happens there, they just need to come to a resolution now. Uh, I know there's, uh, well, I've heard through the media, there's a board meeting tomorrow. Um, you know, you could say, oh, yeah, we'll keep Hook. But then, you know, we went through the same situation at Cronulla a couple of years ago, but, you know, when they signed Fitzy. If they kept Johnny Morris on, every win was going to be against the board and, and you know, it was going to be like, you've done the wrong job. Because why would you get rid of John Morris when you just keep winning? Mm. But then every win that you lose, it's still going to talk about, oh, you did make the right job, but we're going to be in the media for it. So... 
for me, it's a hard one. They need to make a decision. If they keep Hook, then letting you know, add, add another year or two, whatever. But then if they don't want to keep Hook, then do you get rid of him? Mm. Because you're going to be in the media and you're going to get scrutinised for everything you do for the rest of the year. Well, Wado, you blokes, the two of you, your current NRL players, talk us through this. The coach, he's the coach. So do you go out next week and give 100% or do you say, this bloke's half out the door anyway? No, you always give 100%. Yeah, you like, got your own not, standards. You, you have to. like Otherwise, you just don't. Get to even that if level. you, even you if don't you get to no that coach. level in the first place, yeah. if you if you don't have, you, as soon as you cross that line, you're given a hundred percent. And I just think, like I, I completely understand what like Gordy said in those comments. Like if you if you're not backed by your bosses, well, why would you want to show up every day and, and go to work? Blah, blah, blah. And I'll tell you why. It's because of the relationship he has with the players. Like it's not just a week in week out job that you do. You you build from October. You build from November. Mm. He's been there for what is it? Two years. Two years plus. He's got a relationship with his players. That's why he's coming to work. He's coming to work because that's a part of the coach. When you're a coach, you're you're a caretaker. You're you're trying to help people person. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to help develop young men yeah. in this game, make mm. them better people, not just players. You have uh, an obligation, um, you know, and, you a, create, and, a, and a care factor. It's more than just a job. You create it's your, relationships as yeah, well. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's it's your obligation to try and you know, develop these young men in the better people. It's almost, it's not, I would hate to say a fatherly figure, but you know, it's a, it's a part of your role to try and develop these people. So mm. even, and especially in sport and, and rugby league, it's such a team, you know, team environment. Like when, when your back's against us, you, you actually go, well, you know what? Don't worry about all that. I'm just going to pour more into this because this is what I care about. This is where I get the value. And so it, it's not just easy just to say, the bosses aren't backing me. I'm just going to walk away because you're walking away from 30 players and 30, but, fr- and 30, and, and the other th- thing is 30, well, Wado, more than likely 30 people you've poured your heart and soul in and trying to make better. And, and for me as well is you look at what Ben Hunt said last week when he wasn't there. You know, so when they asked him about it, he's like, you know, he, he loves hook. He's got the great relationship. He reckons that they've moved forward and, and they're in the right direction. But for me, looking outside in the fans, the ones that want hook gone, are they going to go, well, what's, we're off hook. Now we're going to get off Benny Hunt because he's backing him. Mm. So it sort of puts a players in a situation, whereas they're going to get a, a hiding from nothing from the fans because players can't come out and say, oh, I don't want that coach, coach. I don't want this coach at our club. Like it, it just, it's just not, it, that's what you don't it's do. Their job. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, not their, their job, job to and, do that. Anyway. And, and every week they're getting fronted by the media and Ben Hunt's getting hounded, whether it's an interview pre-game, post-game, uh, whether it's at training, the poor bloke just wants to go out there and play footy. And at the moment, it looks like he's just got the whole weight of the world on his shoulders and you know, he just looked flat after the game. Uh, I know Honey well, and he's normally a jovial character, mm. and he just looked like, just right. looks like he needed a rest because he looked just like he was just knackered. It's you know that you look at the Dragons now, and yesterday they were playing in those red jerseys, and I know that doesn't mean anything, but you know, like everything you hear out of the joint now is just average. You know, recruitment is average. They say the board doesn't get but on. That's what we're going to get, Maroon. But listen, I want to say, oh, I want to call BS on yeah, both of you. Oh, I want to call BS on both of you because what you're both suggesting, and it's bullshit, is <laughs> that you're saying that Hook and 30 players all get on, all love each other, and it's all this outside noise. It's my, I, I would, I've never played an NRL game in my life. I'm the worst footballer you've ever seen. Wait, but there is just, no way no, 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 no. those all those players back hook. There is no way. Yeah, but the other thing is, we didn't say every single one of those thirty players back him in every job. You always have arguments with your with your boss. A lot of people just have a working relationship with their so, boss. Did, no, no, no. no listen, w- listen to me here before I finish, mate. When you're doing something, I like that. Shannon, if, if he's getting good at this gig, isn't he? Did you have a good relationship with everyone that you've worked here this, at this joint? No, I go home and bag them all. Exactly right. So do we. But yeah. then you come to work, you have a working relationship. Whether you might not get a, uh, along with the coach, you get along with your players. Nearly every player I play with, I love, I get along with. And they're the ones that drive you. You're in the trenches, not just when you play, all preseason, you're building this. Like, it's hard to say. It's not like a relationship, but it's just something that you, you create in that whole preseason, isn't it, Wade? Yeah. It's something oh, that you can never create. No, 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 no. See, you're, you're trying, you're trying, see, you're no, trying, you're trying to twist you're, our no, words around. Right. Listen, listen. No, no, you. No, you two are like, wait, 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 wait. Hey, listen to you. Yeah. Now right. you can listen okay, to Okay, go on. Zip it, What I said was I can understand Gordon comments that if the bosses don't back you, just walk away. Just walk away. I'll walk away. All I'm saying to you, it's not as easy as that because you're walking away from a whole lot more yeah. than just your bosses. You're 30 guys that love you and you love Mate. them. And, and it's going to be like as well. It's going to be like that. If you've ever seen that movie, The Club, now they're going to win every right. game for Hook and they're going to win the premiership. 
We're not saying no, that. Mate, mate, we're not saying it's, that. It's just not as easy as to, you think just no, to walk away. I, I don't. I wouldn't know, mate. I'm just saying, like, but you and that's can't. What we're saying as well. Yeah, you can't. No, I'm say, not saying that every player loves him there, but they've got. Oh, a, okay. they've, got a, they've got a working relationship with. Yeah, not every player there loves him. Well, I'm out of there, so. You didn't love him. I got along with him. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll look. We'll leave it at that. But uh, obviously, he's not going to be there much longer. Do you guys is have a, is, a, a, is that according to you? What he's gone? Is he? Well, mate. You know, we it, look. I've been watching footy for 53 years, probably. Yep. And soon as, uh, you know, like... This is, you know, can I say, this is a similar conversation that we had with, well, about you and Madge last year at Tigers. Me and Madge? Like, you were the one pumping Madge saying he still deserves to have a coach, well, be a coach. Mate, Madge has won a premiership and a premiership in the Super League, all right? Yeah. As Hook won, as, uh, no disrespect to Hook, as Hook, all coaches deserve more respect than they get. Yep. Okay. Is that fair enough? That's, but they sign up to, you know what the old saying, they sign up to get sack coaches. All, all, all I'm saying is, <laughs> all I'm saying is, we all have, be, we're all. So you're just a hook hater. No, I love hook. I, I know actually, him and I love him. I was thinking about um, going and coaching after footy, but after this chat, yeah, I no. might choose a different like, I'm career I'm just going to try to get as close to the chicken as I can and just stick to the radio. As soon as they start, as <laughs> soon as they start saying. No, I agree with you. Yeah. If, once they're. If he's there at the end of the year, I'll take you both to Mr. Wong's. No, but you lied because last time no, we had a bet. I don't lie. Last time you had a bet about Gold Coast Titans, what happened? You're still a because, man. Mate, that is was completely not what I said. <laughs>